Hi, it's Under the Dot and I'm Ken Hyatt. We were looking at the EV powertrain. Now we're going to dive a little bit deeper into some of the system components and some of the testing challenges that we have. Shashank, what do we have set up here? We talked about how important testing is for this industry, right? And um, we have a battery charger here, but we'll, we'll talk a little more about what goes into testing, right? To pick that example of the battery charger, battery charger essentially is an AC to DC converter, right? Like any other power supply that we have seen in the past, right? And the circuit diagram looks quite similar. It's an AC to DC and a DC to DC stage. Right? What's different about automotive is really the performance angle of it and the power density. They are really trying to push it in terms of performance and power density, as we talked about. To get there, you really want to get the most efficient design as you can, right? What that means at the circuit level is you want to time those switches very, very accurately. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure your gate drive circuit is performing the best way possible. And you want to make sure that the losses in all these components are, you know, very, very low, right? What that also means is you, you want to try and measure all the switches simultaneously if you can, especially for that dead time measurement, you know, which is very, right. very, important. It's very important. In the past, you know, what has been kind of well understood and easy is the low side measurement, right? So if you look at this circuit, the low side measurements are usually well understood because they're ground reference. Right. And you can e easily make those measurements, right? What's been really tough is the high side measurement. And what's even tougher for automotive is the high switching frequencies as we talked about, right? right. So the high voltage in presence of high switching frequency and a floating voltage, extremely difficult. We used Differential probes right. or probing techniques to do go ahead and do that. What is the what is the reason why it's different today? The problem is these probes, these differential probes, were never designed for very high frequency of operation, uh, right? Okay. So Most of this key. probe, yeah, exactly, right? So it's not just high voltage and the floating voltage. When you add high switching frequency to mm -hmm. it, it all breaks down, right? Think about this. Just look at the leads on this thing. It's crazy how long those leads are, right? And if you know RF, if you know high frequency, anything that's that long, no matter how much you twist them, they're going to act as an antenna. Yeah, right? we're just gonna pick up the latest radio exactly, station. Right? So <laughs> whenever you have a, a, a circuit that's switching really fast, it just picks up all this noise and all you see is junk, right? So you don't really know when the switch is actually turning on, if the ringing is real, mm -hmm. if those oscillations are real or not, right? And what that does is adds a design time, right? Because you don't know if this is real and you're trying to fix it. Right? So engineers end up over designing their designs to compensate for these problems. They end up spending more time chasing problems that are probably not even there. What we want to do is want to measure. Exactly my point, right? So if you really want to get those designs to be optimized to the exact level, not over design them, adding cost, right? You really want a system that is very, very accurately telling you exactly where the switches are turning on, they're turning off, and the losses they're having, right? We've been working quite a bit with these engineers to solve this specific problem. And that's when we essentially came up with this isolated probing system, right? And you'll, you'll notice very quickly, right? So we got rid of the leads, first of all, right? So the leads are gone. This is a nice shielded cable to actually take care of that problem so that nothing gets picked up, right? Uh, down to the connector, right? So you want connector to be nicely shielded, really nice tight, so nothing gets out of that signal and radiates, right? This isolation part of it, right? Most of these probes were electrically isolated, meaning that they were still attached to a scope. There is right. parasitics and inductance, right? Mm -hmm. Here, we actually got an optical cable, so you have so complete is isolation from the scope, which essentially means a truly floating system, right? and that gives you the performance you need for this high switching frequency systems. So we really minimize the RF interference here. Uh, that and you can actually reduce all the common mode voltage, right? The floating voltage we talked about. So you can really cancel that out, right? So you have a very high common mode voltage and a really good bandwidth response on something like this. You know, if you take the same measurement with the ISO view probe again, you'll see the difference. You can actually see the gate measurements and the Miller plateau, right? It's pretty incredible what it can do. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's real interesting yeah. and really significant. What other challenges are we going to be facing? I think the other one that I, I think is still kind of partly solved is the current measurements. Current measurements are really, really tough. And I'll, I'll give you an example. So people have been trying to measure current on the drain and the load side of high you know, switching frequency converters for a while. And usually they use a loop, right? So they'll put a loop sure. in. Sure. <laughs> but how do you do it on something that small? Well, that's, that's one part of it, because one, it's really small. The second part of it is the bandwidth, right? The, the switching oh, right. frequency is so high, yeah. this becomes an antenna, right? So you're adding inductance to your circuit, and that might end up blowing the circuit. That is the extreme of it, right? But 
the measurement sucks, right? Because you're trying to use a current probe, it doesn't have the bandwidth, and this just adds more problems to your circuit, right? So this doesn't work anymore for most cases, right? A good option they have left is with shunt. Right? We, we started experimenting with this, and as you can see, you know, um, shunt measurements are probably the most accurate you can get out of high frequency measurements, right? right? And you essentially use a probe like this to measure the shunt as well, mm -hmm. so you can get the really low voltages across the shunt. The drawback is the cost, you know, the, the, you have to put a shunt in, right? And then generally you're adding inductance and stuff, right? So there is, there is uh, trade-offs as always, but this is really the only method we have seen which works really well for that, right? So, isolated probing system, takes care of high frequency. Does it matter what kind of scope we have? What really helps is having high resolution on a scope, right? And I'll tell you why, right? So think of some of the measurements. One of the very critical measurements people make is the RDS on measurement, right? The, the on time resistance measurement. And what's, what's interesting about that measurement is you're trying to measure a really small voltage in presence of a high voltage, right? right. So it's when the VDS, the drain voltage actually turns off, right? So you have a 400 volts and then you're trying to measure millivolts in presence of 400 volts, right? So if you think about the vertical resolution you need, it's like pixels, right? How many pixels do I need to actually see details on that millivolts? And that's where high resolution really helps, right? So for example, a, a scope like this, which is a 12-bit scope, helps quite a bit in terms of getting that resolution you need for, right? Okay. Another example is a VGS measurement. The gate voltage is five volts, 10 volts, 15 volts in presence of VDS, which can be 600 to 800 volts, right? So that's where it really helps to have a high resolution. At the end of the day, we are trying to get the highest efficiency possible, right? And that's where the component losses comes in that we talked about earlier, right? So it helps to have a system, uh, a complete system, which essentially helps you measure the component losses. So, you know, for example, the power analysis package on this, it gives you, you know, inductant losses, magnetic losses, component conduction, as well as switching losses, right? So that, that helps you quite a bit, right? It's really about getting to market faster, making your design process easier, right? taking inaccuracies out of it and making sure you're really getting what you're looking for, right? So that's really what it is. Thank you so much for spending so much time with us today. Great explanation on the EV powertrain and diving into the details here. We really appreciate you viewing this too. And we'd like to get your comments and questions. So please go ahead and join the conversation on our social channels. And remember, under the dot is for engineers by engineers.